see if I can locate the Partisan HQ. I've always enjoyed the Sniper Elite games. Yes, they're a little bit hammy, and Sniper Elite 4 does not change that in the slightest, but they're still a lot of fun to play through, especially if you've got a friend alongside you through the campaign. Set directly after Sniper Elite 3, this game sees Carl Fairburn heading out of Africa and landing in Italy ahead of the main Allied invasion force. On the one hand, he's paving the way for the Allied invasion, but there's a much more sinister threat at large that he's there to actually neutralise, with German scientists having figured out laser-guided missile technology that could easily sink the Allied fleet. But Carl is deep behind enemy lines and he's facing a bit of an uphill struggle and needs basically as much help as he can get. So he hooks up with the partisan resistance, gets a few pointers from an OSS operative, and Rebellion have basically given him an awful lot more possibilities for when he's out in the field. The maps are all now huge and open affairs, in contrast to the long linear levels of before, and they're absolutely stuffed with patrolling soldiers. You can complete each by effectively just heading to the main objective and making good your escape, but every single level is also preceded by a little area in which you talk to a handful of these people and check in with Allied Command via radio. They give you a few extra missions to add to your mission objective list, uh, things like taking out a series of artillery guns or counter sniping a sniper, maybe searching a graveyard for a partisan stash. Watching these little cutscenes helps to flesh out some of the actually surprisingly good story in the game, and the characters are all slightly caricatured, so they're kind of fun and tie into the hammy feel of the series anyway. But more importantly, they give you these objectives that draw you to different parts of the map and really make the best use out of the world that Rebellion have created. It's still the classic mixture of stealth and sniping that has been at the series' core all along, and basically none of this has really changed. The sniping is effectively the same as before. Depending on the difficulty level you choose, you'll have to simply line up the crosshairs, maybe deal with bullet drop, or even accommodate for wind, but there's now nicely a custom difficulty level option, letting you mix and match difficulty of AI, bullet drop, and other factors within the game world. Carl is a little more nimble now. He's able to grab and stab people while he's hanging from a ledge, for example, and the world has been designed so that he can hide in bushes, grabbing enemies as they go past and pull them into his hiding place. These almost invariably trigger the game's trademark X-ray kill cams, with the gruesome muscle and bone made visible as it's torn and shattered. These do wear a bit thin after a while, just as they did in previous games, and can feel almost incessant if you use the focused held breath to steady your shots and plan trajectories. There's also a lot more of them to trigger because, again, it's not just bullets, it's uh, stabbing people with a blade, environmental kills, or even shrapnel from a trap that you laid 15 minutes ago when you're on the other side of the map. Speaking of traps, there's so much more flexibility in your inventory. Everything now has a dual purpose practically, whether it's throwing a rock to draw a soldier away, being swapped out for whistling to bring them closer, your med kits can be used to, yes, still heal you but also stabilise your pulse, grenades can be made sticky, TNT can be put on a timer, and so on. You can even booby trap a body and leave it for someone else to find, so there really are so many possibilities to the kinds of killing that you can get up to. There's also a very limited supply of suppressed ammo for the first time, letting you kill quietly or silently with your rifle and not having to always break a diesel generator to create a noise distraction or whip out your trusty well rod. The larger maps make this much more of a sandbox game. You can come at an objective from practically any direction, and the AI are pretty well placed to put you under pressure and give you a very difficult and stern challenge to manage to do all of this stealthily. There's a hell of a lot of them for one thing, and even on normal difficulty they can be pretty damn sharp and spot you from quite a distance away. Of course, if you start firing they're going to home in on you pretty quickly, and maybe from all directions. Everyone in a particular area will go on alert, but, nicely, not the people on the other side of the island, or on the other side of the level. So you can always run away, hide somewhere, and wait for it to cool down, or do something else in the meanwhile. Truth be told, they're still not all of that smart though, and will head towards your last known position. That's great, giving them a predictability and making this feel like a game of cat versus very unaware mouse, 
but they can also slip up at times. On the one hand, I've had them react with almost omniscient senses to realize that one of their number has been killed, but then on the other, I've also been hunkered down behind a wall, sitting, waiting for them to do something and move, but they've just not done anything. And so, yes, I could have decided to fire my way out of the area and wait for things to cool down, but honestly, it's just a little bit too tempting to bring up the pause menu and reload the last checkpoint. Sometimes it will put you back just a matter of seconds before you made your mistake, and it loads in very, very quickly, which I'm pretty impressed by. I did on one occasion get a save that corrupted and would crash the game, or I'd be put into a particularly difficult situation to survive, but the game actually preserves the last three autosaves, so there's plenty of flexibility if you need to take one or two steps further back. The campaign can, just as before, be played solo or in two-player co-op, opening up the door for slightly silky tandem stealth takedowns, or alternatively hilarious slip-ups leading to a huge gunfight that lasts for about 15 minutes, and everything in between. There's then a pair of Overwatch missions, where one player is a sniper in one part of the map and the other an operative on the ground below, and these two levels show a similar scale to the main campaign missions. I was actually really quite impressed with the amount of stuff that both players have to do, so you're always active and always engaged. But those are both returning modes. Survival is the new one and it pits up to four players against 12 waves of enemies, on three of the maps which have been adapted from the campaign. It's a nice twist on the traditional horde mode, leading you to new command posts every three waves, pushing you to defend from new vantage points, spotting clusters of enemies coming from different directions, and occasionally having to deal with tanks and armoured vehicles. It can be tough, especially if you're not aware that you're about to run out of ammo and that you need to loot bodies but there's always the hope that one person can make it through to the end of the wave, and actually, it's not too difficult if you know what you're doing. And then there's also the competitive multiplayer, with various forms of deathmatch and team deathmatch that will be familiar to anybody that's played the previous games. They're pretty standard, and yeah, they can be nice and tense, but Rebellion are also trying to mix things up a little bit. Control has you racing to capture and hold a radio station so that you can... If you are in control, call in artillery to try and kill the enemy, and it breaks away from the traditional sniper play with a much more frantic pace. Almost to the point that you might prefer running around with the secondary weapon out instead of your sniper rifle. You will still want to be good with that sniper rifle though, but in this mode it is much less vital than in the others, and so it could be seen as a bit more accessible. Honestly, deathmatch and team deathmatch are still going to be the standards though. Overall, it's hard not to see Sniper Elite 4 as by far and away the best game in the series. Rebellion have done a great job of taking the series to the next level, and while it's maybe not quite up there with the very best stealth action games, and there are quite a few rough edges, I really enjoyed playing through this, and I know that once I get to sit down with my regular co-op buddy, it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun going through it. It is absolutely worth your time if you want a second World War shooter with a slightly slower pace than the usual FPS fare. And yes, if you've got a regular co-op buddy, definitely put this onto your wish list. That's all for this video, and as usual, please do subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Head over to thesigfaxis.com for all of our great written content, and we will hopefully see you next time. Goodbye!